Hey everybody, Dr. A here, and in this video, we're gonna be exploring an example of how to compute the vertical stress beneath a circularly loaded area. Now, given to us, we're being told that a 20 foot tall, 10 foot diameter tank is filled with a liquid that has a specific gravity of 1.2 and that the foundation and the empty tank together weigh 15 kips. And then we're being asked to compute the stress at points A and B due to the applied loads. So let's take a look at the given figure. Here we have this tank that's 20 feet tall and has a 10 foot diameter. And when it's empty, its weight plus the weight of the foundation it's sitting on is 15 kips. Now it's not empty, it's actually full of this liquid that has a specific gravity of 1.2. So when we get our calculations going in a minute, we're gonna have to calculate uh, something involving that liquid. So put that in your back pocket for now. The two points we're interested in calculating the stress stresses at are points A, which is beneath the center line of the tank, and point B, which is beneath the edge of the tank. So let's go ahead and get started with our calculation. So I'm gonna write solution here. And the first thing I'm gonna write is um, how to calculate the stress or the pressure due to the liquid in the tank. So we're gonna say sigma liquid. This is gonna be the pressure due to the liquid alone. Now, if you remember from your knowledge of fluid mechanics or hydraulics, the pressure due to um, a liquid is typically all around. It's an all around hydrostatic pressure, and that's gonna be equal to the unit weight of the liquid in question times the height or the depth that uh, the liquid is occupying, okay? Now, the unit weight of a liquid can be computed as the unit weight of water times the specific gravity of that liquid, and then again, H is still computed, um, is still multiplied out here. So we're gonna say 62.4 PCF is the unit weight of water times 1.2, which is the uh, specific gravity of the liquid in question. And then it's fully filling up this 20 foot tall tank. So we're gonna say times 20 feet. And we're gonna be able to say that the uh, pressure due to the liquid in the tank is the following. I'm punching this in my TI-36X Pro calculator. That is um, 1,498 PSF. Now, how is this acting? Well, it really is an all-around uh, hydrostatic pressure, but what we're really interested in is it acting at the base of the tank right here, okay? And so we're gonna say that's the 14... 98 PSF. Now, because we don't know uh, anything about the thickness of this footing, we were not told what the thickness of the footing is, we're just going to go ahead and say that this 1,498 PSF is actually acting all the way at the base of the footing, okay? We're going to say it's fully transmitted to the base of the footing, okay? So um, that's just the liquid itself. Now, in addition to that, we have to account for the stress caused by the weight of the tank and the foundation, okay? So I'm gonna call that uh, sigma DL for dead load of the, of the tank and the foundation. And so together we said that that was 15 kips or 15,000 pounds, and we're going to spread that over the footprint of the tank, okay? So we're going to spread that over uh, the area of the tank, which is just going to be pi times the radius of the tank squared, right? So that's literally just force divided by area, right? Force over area is stress. And so we can punch this through, and again, I'm using my calculator for this, um, 15,000 divided by pi times five squared is 191 PSF. So in total here, in total, I'm gonna uh, put this in green, we have a total stress distribution here due to the empty tank and its, uh, and its contents of 1498 PSF plus 191 
PSF. So uh, adding that up, we get, let's see what we get, 1498. We get 1689 PSF as the total stress at the base of the foundation. So we're going to say the stress at the foundation base is sigma total equals 1689 PSF. Now, what we're interested in is what is the stress at these two points, A and B, which are three feet below the base of the foundation, and point A being at the center line of the tank and point B being at the edge of the tank. So let's look at uh, point A first, okay? We're gonna say uh, sigma sub A is gonna be equal to Q times, and we're gonna use our Boussinesque formulation for um, a circularly loaded area, one minus one divided by, we're gonna say R over Z squared plus one, and then raised to the three halves power. And we can substitute our values in here. Q is this stress, this is Q, okay? So this total stress is the Q value in our Boussinesque equation. So don't let the, the terminology uh, confuse you. And if you, um, looks like some batteries running low right now. Uh, if you wanted to call um, all these stresses Q instead of sigma, that's fine, no problem, okay? So we can say 1689, open that brace up, one minus one over, the total radius is five feet. The depth that we're interested in is three feet. So we're gonna have five thirds and that'll be squared plus one raised to the three halves power. So why don't you go ahead, maybe pause the video and punch this in your calculator and make sure you get the same result I get. When I punch this through, I get about 1460 PSF and that's the stress at point A, so that's one of my answers. Now, the, uh, the question also asked us to calculate the stress at the edge, okay, uh, which was at point B. So we're gonna reference, for this next part, I'm gonna reference DOS and Siva Coogan, um, fifth edition, fifth edition, and that, uh, the table that I'm gonna be referencing is gonna be table 8.4, okay? 8.4, again, a great textbook. Um, that's Fundamentals of Geotechnical Engineering by Das and Siva Kugan. So in table 8.4, what we're gonna do is we're gonna enter in with our Z over R value, okay? And so that's, if you're looking at that table, if you have this text with you, that's gonna be on the left column, the leftmost column. So that's three feet over uh, five feet. So that's gonna be 0.6. We're gonna enter the left of the table of that. And we're also gonna enter the table across the top with our little radius over our capital radius. So the little r value is the radial distance you are interested in, okay? So if we're interested at the edge of the tank, that means that the little radius we're interested in is the same as the capital radius. So I'm gonna say that that is um, just gonna be equal to one or really just five feet over five feet equals one. And I'll make a note here, I'm gonna say, Note that R little r equals capital R at the tank edge, all right? So we enter into that and we pull out this influence value, which Dawson Siva Kugan label as I sub two, and that's gonna be equal to 0.4 from their table. And then we can calculate sigma sub Z as uh, Q, times I2, and uh, of course that's our Q value was 1689. Oh, don't forget your units here, PSF. Always put those units. Uh, Q is 1689 PSF times 0. 0.4, 
and let's see what we get. 1689 times 0.4. I get uh, 676 PSF. And this is actually at point B. So how about I relabel this instead of calling it Sigma Z, I'm calling it Sigma B. So Sigma uh, A is is 1460 PSF and Sigma B is 676 PSF. Now, one thing I want us to note is the stress at the edge of the tank, which is, which is at point B, is significantly less, more than half less than um, the stress at the center of the tank. Why is this? Does this make sense? Well, sure it does. I mean, the center of the tank is what's going to be transmitting the highest intensity of stress. And then as you get farther away from that center of where the stress is applied, the stress gets less and less and less, i.e. at the edge, it's 676. And then if you go farther away from beneath the tank or off to the side of the tank, it will, it will decrease even faster and faster. So that's going to conclude this example. Uh, one last thing I want to point out, please don't get too upset with changing variables. You see there's a lot of sigmas and q's floating around here. Um, you know, you can you can just use different subscripts to denote different types of stresses. Um, sigma is commonly used for stress, but q is also used as the stress at the at the surface where your load is applied for this application. So q is is also known as a stress. If you want to use all all labels of Q, that's fine as well. So that concludes this example. If, the, if this was helpful to you, please hit like and subscribe.